So back to our pit talks. I hope you don't mind if I wander around on the stage a little bit. I'm not very good at standing still. So I have a question for you this morning, this evening. Have you ever noticed how life and your career never really quite unfolds the way you expected? Anybody here doing exactly what they thought they were going to be doing when they were in high school? Please raise your hand. Ah, oh, we got one. Very good. All right. You start out when you're young imagining a million possibilities, right? What do I want to be when I grow up? And it changes daily, monthly. Astronaut, teacher, musician, writer. Like a lot of kids, I went through all of these, although I thought astronaut was way cooler. And I planned for each of these careers, right? What I would need to do in high school, what kinds of classes would I need to take, what college would I need to attend. And never mind, there we go. And if you told me I was going to be doing this in high school or even the first part of college, I don't think I would have believed you. I didn't even start out college as an engineer. And I have to admit, I spent a good bit of my childhood thinking that I did want to be an engineer, so there's a funny little part of this story, except my fourth grade teacher burst my bubble completely when she didn't want to talk about driving trains when we were talking about engineering in math class. Yeah, I really did think for a while. So I know that life can be a little unexpected, and I ended up becoming a geologist and later an engineer. So, and I wanted, I was really surprised though when I ran across a speech by uh, President, former President Dwight Eisenhower in 1957, and he said something that I think is relevant to us today within our profession. And he said in this big speech to the, some national defense folks, plans are worthless. It's a big statement for engineers, right? Plans are worthless. This guy right here, when he went to the beach, he thought he was going to swimming. He thought he was going to have a nice good time jumping around in the water. And it turns out he got slapped in the face with a wave, just in time for his mom to capture our picture. But the other part of what he said was planning is everything. And that's a very interesting dichotomy. Plans are worthless, but planning is everything. This guy's not in over his head. He has survived the wave coming past, and he's ready to move on and deal with the next challenge. And there's a, he says in the speech, there's a great distinction when you're planning for an emergency. Because you have to start with the very definition of emergency, which means you don't know exactly how it's going to happen. It's unexpected. That's why we call it an emergency. And it's certainly true of rock engineering and geohazards in general, right? We know they can occur. We've got a lot of math. We do a lot of modeling. We know the circumstances where they're likely to occur. But the exact timing is a little more of a problem, isn't it? Certainly our nice, now destroyed rockfall sign, they had an awareness that they had this hazard here, but nobody seemed to know exactly when that rock was going to come down. Which is why one Sunday when I thought I would be attending a Boy Scout breakfast, I ended up on top of a rock, as seems to happen a lot in my career, uh, dealing with a toppling failure. And so I, I did rained. I wasn't surprised to get the phone call, although I was definitely surprised not to get to eat my bacon. But it struck me as I was thinking about this speech that you learn a lot from this kind of a dichotomy, this tension he was talking about between plans and planning, doing this kind of work. Plans are useless, but planning is everything. After all, some of the best rock drains I ever designed started out as rock bolt holes. We drilled them for an entirely different reason. And the hole decided to make water and continue to make water. And so you could say, oh, I'm determined this bolt's going to go right here and deal with the water problem. Or you can say, you know, I really did need some drains. I think I'm going to make a new bolt hole over here and let this thing drain and let this one make water. Um, the essence of the observational method, of course, is to look what, what's happening while you are doing something and react to it. We know emergencies don't happen exactly the way we plan. One of the things that I don't think we think about enough as a profession, though, is what happens when one common driver affects a wide variety of infrastructure at the same time. Now, 
I know a lot of you probably heard about the 2010 flood in Nashville, although we complained for a while that CNN and everybody else seemed to forget about us. This is Old Hickory Dam. This is upstream of Nashville, and as you can see, that's rather full. It was a big storm. It caused a lot of flooding in the Nashville area. Uh, you might have seen some of the pictures of downtown Nashville or the Ryman or the Opera Land Hotel. But one of the things that you didn't hear on the news about this rain event is that we had hundreds, literally, of landslides and rockfalls in the entire Middle Tennessee area as a result of that exact same storm. So now you have a city that has flooding issues to deal with, scour issues to deal with, roads that have been washed out, and roads that have been taken out by landslides and blocked by rockfall. So this is something that I think we really need to pay some time to. Some of these turned out to be quite large. Not all of them were small. And that brings us to this word, risk. We use it a lot, right? You hear it in a lot of presentations, risk. We talk about it. And we have to understand with our work how our projects can fail, under what circumstances, because it is fundamental, absolutely fundamental to good design and to developing resiliency within our infrastructure. We look at the probability of failure. What's going to happen, maybe? How likely is it to happen? And what are the consequences of that? Because not learning these lessons from previous projects can be catastrophic, right? You don't want to repeat mistakes of the past, even if it was not foreseeable at the time. You've got to learn from these failures to take these lessons forward. We don't want lock walls collapsing inward and killing workers in the middle of an excavation. This is not how we want to see things happening. And so we design with these kinds of potential failures in mind. It's the essence of what the core and many others call risk-informed design, right? The idea that understanding your potential risks improves your design, improves your safety, improves the ability for you to design and monitor your projects in such a way that you can address these issues and deal with some of the challenges that may be ahead. It's also why long-term monitoring, emergency action plans, and risk assessments are so important because that's that piece, that's that planning piece that we were talking about earlier when the difference between plans and planning. And it has something else here. It helps you develop your judgment. The judgment that you need to address these kinds of risks and to handle emergencies starts right here with planning. With relentless preparation and study, it is not enough to finish in school, right? It's great. You got a nice shiny degree, you graduate, you walk out into the world, you take your PE exam, oh, great, I'm a PE, awesome, you're not done. You're never done. Because as former President Eisenhower remarked later in his speech, if you haven't been planning, you can't start work intelligently. Oh. And that's the reason it's so important to plan, because it keeps you steeped in the character of the problem you may be one day called upon to solve. Again, relatively profound. He was talking about national security, but it's got rather a lot to say in our area as well. So where does judgment come from, right? This is a question that we have been asking ourselves in our profession for some time. Well, certainly it comes from experience, yes. And as uh, Dr. Marr quipped in a recent uh, uh, presentation, it also comes from bad judgment, right? Learning from the mistakes of the past. But I think we develop part of the judgment that we need because of this fundamental dichotomy, this knowledge that we cannot define everything, that we are going to have to deal with the unexpected during construction, during long-term monitoring, dealing with our infrastructure. We have a dynamic situation that we have to cope with. Failures are uncomfortable. We don't like to talk about them, at least when they're ours, right? It's a lot easier to talk about somebody else's failure than your own. But they are one of the most important teachers that we will have and the most important guides to better judgment. And so we must always be looking at these kinds of risks to our plans. What, how likely are these drivers to happen? We have to consider this in our designs as a whole. How will our infrastructure react to problems that we may not be able to control, right? To forces that we may simply have no control over. And how are we going to design for that? 
Do we design for that? How much do we design for it? How big do we build it? How much resiliency, you've heard that word a lot, right? Do we put into the system? These are big questions and they are not cookie cutter. They are not textbooks. They are the judgment that we have to be performing every day as we are doing our design. And not only is it necessary that we design this, the bridge, the flood wall, the levee, the rock slope. It is important that we consider the overall infrastructure as a whole and how it's working together as a system. Because it is vitally important for us to consider what second order effects of one particular piece of infrastructure failing at the same time that another one does if they can fail by the same drivers. So we work in one of the best professions there is, honestly. It has been my great privilege um, to have been working in this for as long as I have, and I hope to continue to work into it for many more, many more years. And as we saw from our opening session, and as I hope you are aware, we really truly do stand on the shoulders of giants. If we have seen further, as the quote goes, that is why. But it behooves us to build on that legacy, to continue to strive, to push, to understand these risks that we can face with our infrastructure. We understand the threats to our infrastructure, understand how that infrastructure can fail, understand how we can design better and monitor better. We have to keep striving to refine our understanding because our society and our world depends on us to get it right. They really do. And if you'll pardon a final moment of humor from a geo who really, really loves rock engineering and after many, many times that I have walked out onto a rock cut or walked out onto a site and saw someone doing something that really made me nervous, I would like to leave you with one final thought. Please do not park here. Thank you.